Oh, hey. The scientific experiments are sometimes conducted on human beings, but this is not always ethical or legal. There are several reasons why human experiments can be considered unethical. One of the main reasons is that they can cause harm to the individuals who are participating in the experiment. For example, some experiments may involve exposing individuals to potentially dangerous substances, or they may involve putting participants in physically or emotionally stressful situations. Additionally, some may violate the principles of informed consent, which require that individuals are fully informed about the nature of the experiment and the potential risks involved before agreeing to participate. This means that participants must be given all the information they need to make an informed decision about whether or not to participate in the experiment. I'm Mike with List25, and here are the 25 strangest human experiments ever conducted. Twenty-five, The Tea Room Trade Sex Study The tea room trade was a study conducted by sociologist Loud Humphreys in the 1960s. The research focused on the behavior of men who engaged in sexual activity with other men in public restrooms, known at the time as tea rooms. Humphreys observed the men's behavior and interviewed them to understand the social dynamics of the tea room and the motivations of the men who engaged in this behavior. The study was controversial due to its subject matter and the methods used by Humphreys, which some have criticized as unethical. However, it remains an important work in the field of sociology and has been widely discussed and studied by scholars. 24. The Stateville Penitentiary Malaria Study The Stateville Penitentiary Malaria Study was a study conducted in the 1940s at the Stateville Penitentiary in Illinois, which was designed to investigate the effects of malaria on the human body. What makes this study controversial is that it was conducted on inmates at the prison who were infected with the malaria parasite and then treated with various drugs to determine their effectiveness in treating the infection. However, the experiment was ultimately considered a success in terms of advancing the understanding of malaria and its treatment. 23. Operation Artichoke Operation Artichoke was a CIA-led program that was active in the 1950s, which focused on the use of hypnosis and other mind control techniques for intelligence gathering and behavioral modification. The program was part of the larger MKUltra project, which I'll get to later, which was a series of experiments carried out by the CIA on human subjects to study the effects of psychological manipulation. The purpose of Operation Artichoke was to explore the potential use of hypnosis and other techniques for interrogating subjects and extracting information from them. The program was highly controversial and was eventually shut down in the early 1960s. 22. The Monster Study The Monster Study was a psychological experiment conducted in 1939 by psychologist Wendell Johnson at the University of Iowa. The experiment was designed to study the effects of stuttering on children and involved 22 orphans who were chosen as subjects. The children were split into two groups, with one receiving positive speech therapy and the other group receiving negative speech therapy. The children in the latter group were subject to a series of verbal reprimands and discouragements, which ultimately caused some of them to develop stuttering problems. The experiment was highly unethical, as the children were not fully informed about the nature of the study and did not give their informed consent to participate. Additionally, the negative speech therapy used on the children was harmful and caused significant emotional distress. As a result, the experiment was widely criticized and led to significant changes in the way psychological research is conducted. 21. Operation Midnight Climax Operation Midnight Climax, which is not as sexy as it sounds, was a CIA program that was carried out in the 1950s and 60s. It, too, was also a part of MKUltra. As part of Operation Midnight Climax, CIA agents set up safe houses in San Francisco and New York City where they would bring in prostitutes to entice men back to the houses. The agents would then secretly dose the men with LSD and other drugs without their knowledge or consent to study the effects of the drugs on their behavior. The program was eventually shut down after it was exposed to the public in the 1970s. 20. Sexual Reassignment Sexual reassignment is a term that refers to the process of transitioning from one gender to another. This can involve a range of medical procedures and therapies that can help a person align their physical appearance and their body with their gender identity. For some people, this can include hormone therapy, surgeries to alter the appearance of their genitals, chest, or face, and other treatments. 
There have been cases of sexual reassignment at birth. One of the most famous among them is that of the Canadian David Reimer, who was born biologically male in 1965. However, after a botched circumcision, doctors performed sexual reassignment on him, and he was raised as female. Reimer realized he wasn't a girl when he was between the ages of 9 and 11, and began living as a male from the age of 15. As a result, he suffered from severe depression, and eventually took his own life. 19. Project MKUltra Project MKUltra, as I've mentioned several times before, was a secret research program carried out by the CIA in the 50s and 60s. The goal of the program was to investigate the use of drugs, particularly LSD, for mind control and interrogation. The program was highly controversial, and many of the details of the experiment remain shrouded in secrecy. Project MKUltra was officially terminated in 1973, but its legacy continues to raise questions about the ethics of government-sponsored research on human subjects. 18. The Stanford Prison Experiment The Stanford Prison Experiment was a psychology experiment conducted in 1971 at Stanford University in California. The experiment sought to study the psychological effects of power and authority on individuals by replicating a prison environment. 24 male participants were arbitrarily assigned to be either prisoners or guards, and were placed in a simulated prison environment for two weeks. However, the experiment had to be terminated early due to the extreme psychological distress of the participants and the unethical behavior of the guards. The experiment showed that individuals will conform to social roles and expectations even when those roles are abusive and harmful. It's considered a classic example of the dangers of obedience and conformity. 17. The Aversion Project The Aversion Project was a series of experiments led by Dr. Aubrey Levin in South Africa during apartheid. The methods used in this experiment are considered medical torture today, and its aim to cure homosexuality, in this case in South African soldiers, is generally considered to be a harmful and discredited practice. Homosexuality is not a disease or a disorder, and therefore can't be cured in the way that you might treat a medical condition. 16. Syphilis Experiments in Guatemala The U.S. government conducted medical experiments involving the sexually transmitted disease syphilis in Guatemala in the 40s. The experiments, which were unethically conducted without the knowledge or consent of the individuals involved, were intended to test the effectiveness of penicillin in treating the disease. 15. The Effect of Radiation on Testicles The University of Washington, on behalf of the U.S. government, conducted a series of experiments to test the effects of radiation conducted on U.S. inmates in the 60s and 70s. Testing the effects of radiation on human beings is unethical and illegal because it causes harm to living organisms. Like the testicles. Please don't experiment on my testicles. That is all. 14. The Milgram Experiments the Milgram Experiment was a series of social psychology experiments conducted by Yale University psychologist Stanley Milgram in the 1960s. The experiments were designed to test how far people would go in obeying an authority figure who instructed them to perform actions that conflicted with their conscience. Some of the participants were led to believe that they would administer electric shocks to others. Unbeknownst to them, the shocks were fake. But, believing them to be real, some of the participants were willing to administer these shocks to other people. 13. Unit 731 Unit 731 was biological and chemical warfare research of the Imperial Japanese Army that conducted human experimentation during World War II. It was based in Pingfang District in Harbin, China, and was responsible for some of the worst war crimes committed by Japan. The unit conducted experiments on live prisoners, including Chinese, Korean, Russian, and Mongolian civilians and prisoners of war to develop and test biological and chemical weapons. The full extent of the atrocities committed by Unit 731 isn't fully known, but it's estimated that thousands of people were killed and subjected to cruel treatment during the unit's operation. 12. The Stimoceiver Chip in 1965, the Spanish scientist Jose Delgado conducted a series of neuroscientific experiments known as the Stimoceiver Chip Experiments. The Stimoceiver is a chip that, when inserted in the brain of an animal, or potentially a human being, can allow a person to direct their behavior. In his experiment, Dr. Delgado placed the chip on a bull whose behavior he was able to direct with a remote control. 
The stim receiver developed by Delgado has also been tested on human beings. 11. Electroshocks on children. Electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, also known as electroshock therapy, is a treatment for certain mental health conditions in which a person is briefly exposed to an electric current. It's typically used to treat severe depression, bipolar disorder, and catatonia. ECT can be an effective treatment for some people, but it's also a controversial procedure, especially when used on children. And that's exactly what Dr. Loretta Bender did in New York between 1942 to 1955. Dr. Bender conducted ECT on hundreds of children, ranging from three to 12 years old. 10, infecting mentally disabled children with hepatitis. Willowbrook State School was a state-funded institution for children with intellectual disabilities in Staten Island, New York. In the early 1970s, several reports and investigations revealed that the school was overcrowded, unsanitary, and inadequately staffed, leading to conditions that were considered inhumane. One particularly disturbing report detailed the practice of intentionally exposing children to hepatitis to study the effects of the disease. This practice led to several lawsuits and investigations and ultimately led to the closure of Willowbrook in 1987. 9. Nazi Experiments The Nazis conducted many horrific experiments during World War II. Some of the most infamous were performed at concentration camps, where prisoners were subjected to torture and medical procedures without their consent. Many of these experiments were intended to further the Nazi regime's racist and eugenic goals, and they resulted in countless deaths and suffering. Some examples include freezing experiments, high altitude experiments, and ones involving chemical and biological agents. The individuals who carried out these experiments were war criminals, and many were tried and convicted after the war. 8. The Hoffling Hospital Experiment The Hoffling Hospital Experiment is a famous study in psychology that was designed to test obedience to authority. The experiment, which was conducted in 1966 by psychologist Stanley Milgram, once again, involved a nurse, a doctor, and a patient. The nurse was instructed by the doctor to administer a potentially lethal dose of medication to the patient, despite the nurse's concerns about the medication's safety. And despite their reservations, most nurses in the experiment went along with the doctor's orders, illustrating the powerful influence of authority on behavior. 7. Optogenics Optogenics is a technique used in neuroscience that involves the use of light to control neurons that have been genetically modified to express light-sensitive ion channels. This allows researchers to investigate the function of specific neural circuits and to study the underlying mechanisms of neurological disorders. The technique has been used to study a wide range of brain functions, including perception, behavior, and memory. So, could optogenics be used to control human behavior? 6. Radio Frequency Identity Chips A radio frequency identity, or RFID, chip is a computer chip that can be placed on or implanted in people, animals, or objects to track and identify them. An RFID can also store data. The first RFID implant in a human being took place in 1998. RFID in humans can be used to track their movements and locate them at all times. 5. TGN-1412 Drug Trial The TGN-1412 drug trial was a clinical trial that took place in 2006 to test a new drug called well, TGN-1412. The drug was being developed as a treatment for autoimmune diseases and leukemia, and it was intended to stimulate the immune system. However, during the trial, the drug caused a severe reaction in the six healthy volunteers who received it, leading to multiple organ failure and life-threatening conditions. The trial was immediately halted, and the volunteers were given medical treatment. Thankfully, they all recovered from their adverse effects of the drug. The incident led to significant changes in the way clinical trials are conducted, including stricter regulations and closer monitoring of trial participants. 4. Tuskegee Syphilis Study the Tuskegee Syphilis Study was a scientific study performed between 1932 and 1972 by the U.S. Public Health Service in Tuskegee, Alabama. The study was designed to observe the natural progression of untreated syphilis in poor rural black men who had the disease. The men were never told they had syphilis, and they weren't treated for it even after penicillin became available as a standard cure for the disease in the 1940s. 
This study is considered a significant example of unethical medical research and racism in the US. It led to significant changes in the way clinical studies are conducted, including the development of guidelines for informed consent and the establishment of institutional review boards to oversee the ethical conduct of clinical research. Three, mustard gas tested on soldiers. Mustard gas is a chemical warfare agent that was used during World Wars I and II. It is a potent vesicant, meaning that it can cause severe skin, eye, and respiratory irritation and blistering. It was primarily used as a means of chemical warfare, and it can be dispersed over a wide area and can be difficult to protect against. During World War I, mustard gas was tested on U.S. soldiers to evaluate its effectiveness as a weapon. This was a very dangerous and unethical practice, as the effects of mustard gas on human subjects were not well understood at the time. The soldiers who were exposed to mustard gas often suffered severe injuries and long-term health effects. In recent years, the use of mustard gas has been banned by the Chemical Weapons Convention, an international treaty that prohibits the use of chemical weapons. It is illegal for any country to produce, acquire, or use mustard gas for any purpose. Two, releasing infected mosquitoes. In the 1950s, the US Army released millions of mosquitoes infected with dengue and yellow fever in the cities of Avon Park, Florida and Savannah, Georgia. These experiments on biological warfare were designed to test whether mosquitoes could spread these contagious illnesses. Unsurprisingly, many people became sick and several even died because of these unethical experiments. One, radioactive pill for pregnant women. As part of research conducted at Vanderbilt University in the 1940s, pregnant women were given radioactive pills at a free prenatal clinic run by the university. This experiment took place in the context of tests conducted on human subjects to determine the effects of nuclear explosions and other kind of radioactive exposure on human beings during the Cold War period that followed World War II. So, what are some of the strangest human experiments you've ever heard of? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content in the future, including our nice little shorts, because sometimes you don't have time for a whole little video, so you want a little bite size, bite 25. I'm nicknaming them bite 25. So check those out. Don't forget to join our Discord. Uh, it's growing uh, daily-ish. <laughs> We're still working out. I'm still building it. Just join. Join in on the fun. Come talk. And uh, please think about becoming a member. That way you can help support this channel so we can continue to bring you such awesome content like this one. And as always, see you next time. Be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.